Hello, YouTube. It's Lion here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we are doing another uh, manga review. Today we are going to be reviewing Chobit's um, 20th Anniversary Edition, which covers volumes 1 and 2, and has some really cool color pages that I think were really, really nice. Now, Chobit's is written by Clamp, which is a mangaka team. I think it consists of four different women that uh, work together in order to create uh, series, right? They've done a bunch of different ones. They've done uh, RG Veda, they've done Chobits, um, and a lot of Shoujo um, that I actually can't remember, but a lot of it is quite interesting. And like Card Captor Sakura is the other one that I think is uh, rather big. And uh, yeah, this is published by Kadansha. I think this was originally published by Dark, uh, Dark Horse in the smaller omnibus editions, kind of like Gantz, but um, I guess eventually. Kadansha uh, comics, like the English version, got the rights to distribute um, Chobits uh, once uh, Dark, Dark Horse stopped having the rights to it, I guess. And so they released these really nice collector's editions, right? Um, and the demographic here is Seinen. It's actually uh, kind of interesting that a shoujo team or a Jose team worked on a Seinen series and I actually didn't really notice that much of a difference between this and other seinen it didn't really feel like it was coming from a different kind of background it just felt very very you know in line with other series of this type and uh yeah genre wise this is a sci-fi and it's a rom-com it basically features a romantic relationship between a android or a ai machine and this human boy which is cool and uh, adaptations wise this has an anime now the premise here is basically that in a more advanced kind of futuristic japan hideki which is our main character finds an uh, abandoned persacom which is an android or an ai kind of like the robots in the irobot movie basically they do things for you and they actually kind of function as computers more than anything right and um her name is chi that's what he names her after that's basically the only thing she can say Kind of like a Pokemon, which is kind of interesting. And what follows is basically this mystery unraveling itself um, as our characters kind of explore the relationship between man and machine, which I guess was kind of prevalent when this was uh, coming out, right? Which is really cool. I think in general, the, the story was really interesting and the way that this kind of uh, explores different uh, avenues of how machines affect humanity are kind of really interesting and actually quite meaningful to today's society right because um well i'll talk about it later but it's very cool very interesting and i think they were very insightful with the way they kind of uh talked about these things right so yeah the plot line here is good and at its core it's a rom-com for sure but it's built around this mystery plot which is really cool i thought it was really interesting how basically our main character is in kind of having a few different relationships with different women kind of occurring at the same time. He's kind of in his moment of popularity and he has this coworker and then one of his teachers and then Chi and then, um, you know, we kind of get him in all of these kind of weird like romantic situations that kind of are unraveling as he kind of realizes that, hey, Chi, Chi has a background that I have no clue about and I want to find out what it is. And then we see kind of, she kind of having her own thoughts and ideas that maybe are kind of interesting because so far we know that persona comms don't really have or, or, or persa comms um don't really have individual thought but rather what they're programmed for and so her being programmed to think individually but not being able to access her data is kind of interesting and it makes it makes it seem like she's a person right and it's really cool and i really enjoy this kind of uh mystery plot, romantic, you know, thing going on. It's a very interesting mism mismatch of genres and kind of uh, plot lines that I really liked. I thought it was really, really well done. I also really enjoy that there's this secondary kind of reflective story that is being told through these children books that she enjoys reading, which is really awesome. I like that, you know, we have something going on and then we get the, the little kind of inter intermission with um, the little children's book that she reads. And the children's books tends to be very deep and very philosophical. And it kind of deals with the same problems that uh, Chi is kind of overcoming, right? And it kind of 
interesting because there's two female characters, right? There's Chi and then uh, the co-worker of Hideki that both kind of fit the main character of the uh, the main story of the, the little children's book. And it's kind of interesting because it shows you, hey man, these it, people in this um, story and in real life currently are getting rid of interactions with humans, with other people that can actually, you know, interact with them and mean something emotionally in, you know, preference for their machines, their iPhones or their Persacoms or whatever the case may be, because they feel like it provides them everything that they need, but it doesn't really, right? Your phone doesn't really love you. Your phone only gives you the kind of feelings that you associate with someone that loves you because it provides you so many things instantly, right? It provides you gratification. If you, you know, Google porn, it provides you uh, what's called emotional validation. If you go on Twitter and you happen to be popular, it provides you all of these things that you need as an individual, but are getting from the wrong source. And it kind of ties in with what Chobits is talking about here, because it's like robots aren't really people. And so you relying on them to get all of these people things that you need is wrong. But if one of these robots is able of actually reciprocating, then maybe it's not wrong, right? And it's a very interesting kind of like, uh, I don't know, like commentary, I guess, on like how people treat their machines and the effect machines have on people. It's a very, very cool exploration of this kind of series. And it's so interesting. I really enjoyed it a lot. Now, characters wise, um, it's okay. I, I don't think anything was particularly bad, but like the characters themselves aren't particularly interesting. Like they're not bad in any sense, but them as individuals are not like that great. However, when they are in the whole kind of like situation with each other, it kind of actually gets really good. So it's kind of a weird thing. Like each individual character as an individual is not very good, but as a part of a whole, they're very interesting, right? So characters, um, we have Hideki, who is the carrying main character. Then he has all of the problems of a horny man, right? Like it's all of the pitfalls of a guy that's really interested in women but doesn't have the confidence to kind of interact with them. And so he gets into all of these ridiculous, pratfally kind of situations that are abundant in, you know, rom-coms and harem type series, which I don't particularly dislike. I, I think most of them are pretty funny. Obviously, it's not something that would work realistically, and it's not about it being realistic, but rather it's about it being funny and enjoyable. And so I don't personally mind. However, it kind of doesn't fit that well with the whole kind of larger tone of the series so it's kind of interesting because it doesn't really harm it like other usually when a main character's personality and style clashes with the tone of the story it feels really wrong and it doesn't work but clamp does a really good job of like allowing his 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 uh harem protagonist you know stuff kind of work in order to provide levity to a rather serious situation which i think was really good uh, Clamp did a great job with him. There's Chi, who's this mysterious robot with human emotions, question mark, kind of like, I don't think, I, we don't really know what is wrong, what is up with her. It doesn't necessarily feel like she has human emotions, but she's getting to the point where she might. And it's a very interesting kind of look at, you know, AI, which is something that maybe isn't super relevant right now, um, because AI is still a very long time, a very long uh, way away from getting to that point, but it's a very interesting look at what could possibly happen, which is very similar to other, you know, general sci-fi stories that kind of deal with this type of stuff. So really good stuff there with Chi as well. But like, they're also not that interesting. Like, it's, it's just so odd. Like, I don't know how to explain it because they just work really nice as part of the plot and the story and the exploration. But like, if I looked at each character as an individual, I would find them Im immensely boring, which is kind of interesting, right? And I say that a lot, I know, but it, 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 it is what it is. And then we have a few other um, characters. We have this young middle schooler who is kind of the cautionary, cautionary tale that we get given to us, which is don't fall in love with your computer or with your Persacom in this case because it doesn't actually love you, love you. It's not actually a real person, 
which is really good and it kind of ties in with the larger story and exploration here. And then we have the teacher and the landlady who are just kind of two older women that provide a sense of stability to Hideki and kind of help him uh, kind of function in society to an extent in a, a very kind of like helpful way but also end up being kind of like uh, objects of Hideki's kind of interest, right? And they kind of revolve around him and Chi in a way that kind of provides both Hideki with um, some stability, but Chi with kind of what she should strive to be in a sense. And it's very well done. I think that they work really nicely, but again, as individuals, they don't really have that much going on for them. Their value comes solely from the way they fit into the story. Um, and then we have a few other characters like the co-worker, which is the kind of human connection and the kind of battle that Hideki is going to have between caring about a person and caring about his computer. Um, but yeah, really good stuff there. I really enjoyed how all the characters fit into the story, but I didn't think the characters themselves were that great, if that makes sense. Like I've said it a few times because I want to iterate the the kind of meaningfulness of what I'm trying to say, but I'm also not sure that I'm saying it correctly. So if anyone understands down in the comments or has a better way of explaining it, please let me know down in the comments. I would really appreciate it um, a lot. <laughs> so yeah, world building really wise, good conversational, not very heavy on the hard science. There's a little bit of techno babble here and there, which I find enjoyable, but it's also kind of really outdated. So this type of techno babble doesn't really work because it doesn't like fit into what you know as techno babble nowadays right right like right now they talk about like uh things happening at the atomic level and they talk about high level mechanics and uh electrical engineering type of stuff like you know magnetism and like uh gravity waves and shit like that this doesn't really deal with any of that it deals with more like very basic general computing type of ideas um and kind of very over like overview high level um kind of programming ideas which is not that bad it, it's pretty simple and really basic but it kind of adds a level of authenticity to what's going on which i think is really good um but like i said this is really not that heavy in terms of techno babble which is really good because it would actually kind of really feel um, like very dated if it was and that just is not that great um so yeah it's, it's a pretty low tech main character as well like um, our, our boy Hideki doesn't really understand computers that well and he has to go to other people to kind of uh, uh, help him understand his relatively high-tech world which is good because it, it basically puts the reader in a situation where they don't have to know about computers or anything like that in order to enjoy the story because the story is going to tell them without the making making them feel dumb because hey you we're not telling you the reader we're telling the main character that is kind of dumb when it comes to technology which is really well done. I really like that. Art-wise, good. It, it has a lot of uh, sketchiness to it. Like, it has a lot of lines that maybe a more kind of, like, modern mangaka would not have as often because more modern mangaka, especially kind of like the Shonen Jump kind of guys, have a very, very kind of, like, defined and strict and thick, you know, outlines to their, to their uh, art which kind of helps them kind of pop a lot. And this doesn't really have, like this still pops and it still looks very nice and very clean, but it's because you clearly see where the drawing is, if that makes sense. Like the the art line, the, the, the line definition and the kind of sketchiness of it has a nice feel to it that is very interesting and kind of really well done and allows you to get, really appreciate that, you know, they're working on their manga, which is really good. Um, I don't know how I, if that described it correctly, but I hope it did. And, uh, yeah, overall I did enjoy it. I thought it was really nice and it has that kind of older long torso style. I don't know what to call it. Like, I don't know the proper term and, and if it's a kind of thing that is common in manga and anime, like common enough to have its own term. Um, but yeah, they have that kind of long torso thing, kind of like in the illustrations that we see in Don Machi or kind of like how Oda has the really like long torsos. Um, but like torsos, when it comes with Oda, tend to be very kind of like, uh, bombastic and very like buxom, especially on the female characters. That's not really the case here. Everyone is kind of more 
like neutral and a little bit more kind of uh, low key about what sex they are. So yeah, it's kind of nice. Uh, fan service wise, there's quite a bit. It's kind of risque, but it's really not on the kind of more modern, uh, almost kind of porno level kind of thing. Like it's not near hentai by any means, but it's a little bit spicier than like a normal person would like assume, right? It, it, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. But basically, there's a bit of a risque feel to this. That That's basically the best way I can talk about it. And uh, yeah, rating wise, a four out of five, it's good. It's super interesting, but there's nothing particularly unique because this really just felt kind of like a different take on the same kind of exploration that we have seen time and time again about how humanity and machines kind of will ha have to work together in such a way that kind of humans will become dependent on machines in a very negative way. Um, although this one kind of focuses on emotional stuff, which isn't really something that we see that often, but that is definitely coming uh, into prominence now with the fact that humans actually are pretty dependent on their uh, machines for a lot of emotional pr like struggles and stuff, right? Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. But again, there's nothing particularly unique about the series. Now, I definitely recommend it. I think it's good. Um, and I think that if you enjoy science fiction stories, you'll enjoy this one. If you enjoy kind of like older art styles, you'll enjoy this. And if you enjoy kind of like oddly deep stories, you'll probably enjoy this as well. Um, similar titles wise, though, I don't really know that um, I know any or have read any similar titles in manga. Of course, I've seen different movies that are kind of similar, like uh, Ex Machina is kind of similar and iRobot is kind of similar, but I don't know that the iRobot book is the same because I've never read it. Um, and I would assume not because Asimov, the way he writes stories is quite different from the way that they were presented in the movie, right? With Will Smith. So yeah, otherwise, um, I don't really know anything similar and I don't have anything that I've read so far in this kind of uh, exploration of sci-fi to really help, um, you know, pinpoint something similar. I guess there is one story in Eve and Eve that's kind of similar. It's the second one, I think, that deals with the female mangaka and the sex android. But I don't know that it's really that similar um, or it is. But that one is a lot more distilled and very specific compared to, you know, Chobits. So, yeah, there you go. That's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was kind of long and rambly and I hope that it wasn't too bad and that you kind of understood everything I said because I know that it wasn't really the best at explaining myself this video, but I just really didn't know how to word things this time. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.